Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Pickles and Bacon Show Rewind. I am Pickles, and that guy over here is my brother Bacon. Say hello, Bacon. Hey dudes, so All right, Bacon, what are we talking about today? Tell him what we're doing, eh? Tell him, tell him. Uh, I'm trying to, you shut the hell up. So we are talking about the book by Henry Winkler called Being Henry, the Fonz and Beyond. It's basically talking about his life from stardom to when he became that little known character from that TV show. Little, small, tiny little TV show called Happy Days. Never heard of it. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. And uh, did you, uh, you read the book? Excuse me. Yes, I've read the book. I read the book and there's quite some interesting stuff, excuse me, in there that we're going to talk about today. One of which was something that I kind of knew, but I didn't know the full story on. So we're going to jump, just jump right in if you're ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, so first, a little synopsis. So the book was written, uh, I believe, earlier this year by the amazing TV star Henry Winkler. Um, He talks about his childhood. He talks about his, his life on Happy Days. And beyond that, and how he couldn't get work for a while, and then he finally got work with a show called Barry. So, I just want to touch on that. And then my first thoughts, my first overall thoughts is, I just want to say, first of all, to him, if he's listening, which I highly doubt that, or if his kids show him this, or some way if he ever gets to see this, I just want to say to him that I'm sorry for how he was treated by his parents. Like, the way his parents treated him, like, I, I felt his pain so much in... A lot of the things you're saying of how they treated him and how they they were so abusive to him being that he has dyslexia. And that, to me, really hurt. So, again, I just want to say my humblest of apologies to him and send lots of love his way. And so that's my overall thoughts about the beginning of the book. Now, I just want to say that he's had a career sp- spanning decades from 70s with Happy Days to currently with the show Barry. Now, I'm going to let you t- touch on your stuff a little bit, because I already said my piece, so I'm going to let you touch on yours and kind of take us to where you want to go. All right. So, um, I learned a lot from Henry Winkler in this book. Um, I just took a few things that I pulled from the book um, that I really noticed, uh, like the catchy tune at the at the beginning of the book. Uh, I listen to audiobooks, you guys, because I also am dyslexic and words are hard. And um, so I prefer listening to other people read me their books. So Henry Winkler uh, narrated his own book, which I love. His voice is very soothing, by the way. Um, it's very soft. And um, I noticed um, that he dedicated the book to his wife's uh Stacy, they've been married for 47 years, which honestly, like, in this day and age, more power to you because, like, I cannot for the life of it just, ugh. And goals. Like, honestly, goals. Um, So the first thing that I re- really grabbed from this book that I noticed uh, was the 1973 casting for Happy Days. He said it was the biggest day of his um, life for his audition um, and that he had never played comedy before that he had been a classically trained actor at Yale and I forgot the other school you guys sorry my attention span like I was working and doing all of this but um, he was classically trained and his huge thing was like he wanted to be like an actua actua you know what I'm saying not like on TV like he comedy funny clown <laughs> um And then the next thing that I um, grabbed was that Henry Winkler was 27 and had had long hair down to his shoulders at the um, audition for Happy Days. Like, someone show me a picture. Someone show me a video. Oh, I have pictures. Hold on a second. Because now, if you listen to the book, he says that he started right after the Mary Tyler Moore show. So I saw saw that episode and I was like, "Uh uh-huh. I was like, "I, I know exactly what he's talking about. Oh, I want to see that episode, by the way, the uh, of the Mary Tyler Moore show. Uh, Mary Tyler Moore is an awesome lady, by the way. She's badass, like way ahead of her time. Uh, 
Go ahead, right. talk amongst yourselves for a second. I find this. Um, also, um, I noticed that um, Henry is very open with the fact that he's dyslexic and he couldn't really read, and that sometimes words are hard for him to comprehend and understand, which, um, like, I understand. Hold on, let me kill Alexa really quick. All right, back. Anyways, um, also said that uh, Henry also said in this book that he wasn't really a great student, uh, which, like, go figure who is. There is so much stuff happening at school. and like. Okay, you like... ready? I found the photo of him from yeah. the Mary Tyler Moore show. You ready? Yeah. That doesn't give me anything. Hold on a second. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Like, I'm not getting anything. I need to see the clip of it. And then here's another one where he's, like, answering the door. Hold on a second. So let me see if I can find a better picture. Let me see if I can zoom it in a little. Okay. Okay. He looks a little like Jim Caviezel there. I got it. I got to see the actual clip. Same, because I've never actually seen that episode. I've never actually seen that and, episode. So. And I'm I'm very interested in, in seeing that show, Barry. Did he say it was on HBO? Yes. I'm going to have to get HBO Max because, like, I want to see what that show is about. I'm going to watch the trailer here in a little bit. Um, anyways, I also learned that parents, uh, Henry's parents were refugees from Germany. And they came over in 1939. And that um, all, of his fa- all of his family's parents died during the Holocaust, which, rest in peace. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Like, that, that has to be scary. But that's um, still no excuse for how they treated him, though. Exactly. Um, they treated him badly. I think it was... I think it's a, co- a combination of many things that happened in those times. Um, but anyways, we strive to be better parents. Um, I also learned that Henry liked to ride the city bus to school. And when people would come in... This, this is an actual direct quote from the book. He he said that he would like to ride the city bus to his school, and when people would come and sit next to him, he would um he would talk to his imaginary horse George in like low key same <laughs> because I don't want no one sit next to me on the bus. Um, long time bus rider girl. Okay, okay, it's giving, it's giving, um, like, Feathered, it's giving, like, um, David Cassidy, I'm like, N- alright, do I, do I dig it? Not on you, my guy, I don't, sorry. Okay, and then the next thing- Love you, that- Henry, but that's not working, my guy. Uh, the next thing I also, uh, pulled from this book that I noticed was that his first time, uh, oh, he was, he was talking about the first time he was intimate with a girl, and that he went behind the drapes, and he was fumbling around trying to get naked. Um, I don't know why I pulled that. That seemed kind of random, but I thought it was funny. Um, also, he's friends with James Earl Jones. Was. Like, can was. you it's imagine? Jones. Can you imagine? I would be having him be like, oh, I would literally be having him record all of my messages for the next 30 years. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> what is Mufasa and what is Darth Vader? Because, like, honestly, like, I need that voice. And you know what else I need? You know what else I would need? The Fonz what? meets Darth Vader. Exactly. Okay, 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 but the Fonz meets Darth Vader with, um, with Captain Mork. Yes. Oh my God. Him talking about Robin Williams. Okay, so um he's also talked about a lot about um Robin Williams in this in this book, which at any time I get to hear stories about Robin Williams always makes my heart sing because I feel like Robin Williams was such was such a deep soul that I think that he put himself on a lot and tried to take on the burden of others and never really listened to what his body or his mind was saying. And so when he was saying that Ronnie Marshall, Gary and Penny's sister, who go, by the way, look up a picture of Ronnie Marshall. She looks exactly like Penny Marshall. Anyways, I digest. Um, He was talking about how 
Ronnie Marshall was looking for someone to cast because they had an idea for a show, a spinoff of Happy Days. So, um, okay, just a little backstory. Happy Days, I think, had four spinoff shows, if I remember three. correctly. Three. Okay, so it was three. It was Laverne and Charlie, Mark and Mindy, and Joni Loves Chachi, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so, then there was the cartoon that later on was voiced by the four by the four main characters called Fonz and the Happy Days Gang, but we don't talk about that. So Okay, so um backstory is that they okay, I was Laverne and Shirley already on by that point? It was uh-huh. Laverne and Shirley first, because that was the first spin off because they've been mentioned several times on the first two seasons of Happy Days. So it was them first, then Mork and Mindy, and then Joni loves Chachi. Okay, so um, Henry Winkler says in the book that Gary Marshall's son came up with this idea that he wanted to see an alien on a TV show and what it would be and what the alien would be like in the real world. So Gary Marshall's like, okay, great. He took the idea and he ran with it. So they were trying to develop the concept for what would become Mork and Mindy. And Ronnie saw Robin Williams out on the street. I guess making people laugh or doing some kind of impressions or whatever. And she hired him on the spot. And Gary and Henry would say, Gary Marshall would be like, you just hired this kid off the street? And and Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Marshall said, well, his hat was full. And I was like, like, goals. But I'm like. And then the chemistry that he said that they had together, because he said that. Uh, when he was reading with all the other people, he said they, they didn't have no chemistry. He said, so Gary Marshall told him to come in to read with, with um, Robin Williams, he said, and it was like instant magic. That's what he said. Yeah, he said it was like instant magic. Um, I've only ever seen a few episodes of Mark and Mindy, um, but I but for the sake of this podcast, I think I could go back and watch it. If I have to see if it's on Amazon. Fonzie's on the pilot. Fonzie is on the pilot of that. So that's really cool. So so uh if he's on the pilot, I'll watch it. Um we'll definitely add happy days to the list of shows that we're gonna review. Um I was gonna add a couple others, but Deke and I were like, we can't sit through them. We'll just like no. Anyways, um so here's the money shot. Here's the money shot right here. Okay, okay, so go. I'm going to go back to where I was because I just, I wanted to talk about Robin Williams. Anyways, so he's friends with James Earl Jones. Okay, get this. This I pulled directly from the book, too. He rented a place in New York in the 70s, and guess how much he paid for rent? $200. $175. $200. I was, I was close. I was if close. I had to pay $174 for rent, girl. Oh, for those of you who can't see, it's a photo of Mark of Robin Williams Mark, uh, and Ron, and uh, Henry Winkler is the Fonz. Man, I bet the stories he couldn't tell, right? And then here, and then here's my favorite one. Okay, you y'all ain't ready for this. Here's I'm my ready, favorite I'm ready, one. I'm ready. Look who's right there in the middle. Yes, it's Penny Marshall. <laughs> Has she? Did Penny Marshall? I feel like Penny Marshall directed Robin Williams in a movie. She might have did. I can't remember. Anyways, uh, we'll come back to Robin Williams later because we're going to do The Birdcage and Mrs. Doubtfire. But that's going to be down the line because right, we're giving, gearing up for October and October is going to be super busy. Um, anyways, um... So, in the note that I wrote about the um, $174 rent, I was like, let me get back into my time machine and find out, because I'm going to go buy a house and then sell it now for, like, $30,000 billion. Um, He also said that he met Stallone at this time, and they were friends. Um, Because they worked on the movie together. And then I think at at this point that I was listening, he was also mentioning about Richard Gere. But first of all, I don't think thought Richard Gere was that old or went back that far. Because I thought Richard Gere came out in the 80s. Same. Like, uh, how old is Richard Gere, by the way? Let me fact like, check I that. Didn't, I didn't think he was around in the in that time. Um, because he was talking, this was his, he started to talk about Lords of Flatbush here. And he mentioned Richard Gere. And I was like, Richard Gere was 
was he's seventy five. He was seventy five. He was born in. He was born August thirty first, nineteen forty nine. I thought for some reason, I for some reason thought Richard Gere was a lot younger. I, well, it goes, but anyways, I digest. Um, so he mentioned about Richard Gere there, and then, um, he was saying that with his dyslexia and his insecurities and anxieties, when he was filming the Mary Tyler Moore show, um, he said there was a part where everyone broke for lunch. And he was kind of alone on the set and he kind of felt abandoned, like nobody liked him or whatever. But that's just how everyone was working. And when he got like when he figured everything out, um, he said he felt a lot better. Um, I noticed you talked about the legendary Joan Scott, his agent in the film in the um book. And then um so he goes back and forth and mentioning happy days and like all of his things, but then um, at one point, he said Henry got his audition for Happy Days from his appearance on the Mary Tyler Moore show, which, Stan, I still got to see the clip. I didn't look it up. Um, I also noticed that um, he said that he never felt happy on the holidays and that his family's apartment felt dark, which I kind of feel that. Like, I understand that part. Um He also, uh, he mentioned at one point spending Thanksgiving with his girlfriend in 1972. I honestly don't know why I wrote that down, but I just, I thought thought that was interesting. Fun fact, Henry Winkler smokes weed. Let's, Let's contemplate that for a second. Okay, so I've learned not only does Henry Winkler smoke weed. Okay, but get, Deke, are you ready for this? I'm listening. Connie Chung smokes weed. You didn't know? She smoked straight of weed, and I'm like, high key, I stand. I just started listening to her book. You'll probably get that sometime this week or whatever. But I was like, when I found out, I was like, she did a she did an episode on Watch What Happens Live, like with Andy Cohen, right? And they were talking about the Mile High Club, and she's a part of the Mile. High Man, again, you didn't let know. Me, let me find out what you and Mari get up to, girl. Girl, I'm just saying. Let me just I mean, find I out. I didn't what know Mari was into that freaky shit, but okay. Let's let me find out what you and Mari get into. <laughs> All right, I digest. Um. Also, Henry Winkler says jewelry. He says jewelry. I, I, I literally picked that up because it was like, it literally went right here because how many times do I ask how you say the word jewelry? Is it jewelry or is it jewelry? And he said jewelry. And I was like, I wonder if that's a Midwestern thing. Do you know uh, what I mean? Because I've heard it in, in all shapes and forms. I've heard jewelry. I've heard jewelry. I've heard, you know, all forms and variations of it. I've heard jewelry. I've heard I the predominantly I've heard people say jewelry, like J E W L E R Y, not because they're supposed to be J E W E L R Y, right? Jewelry. I don't know. I'm d i am just wonder where that comes from because I've I've heard it called jewelry. Anyways. Um he's also very money conscious and he has anxiety. Uh, which I noticed, uh, which I noticed that he mentions a lot. Um, I can and... tell because in Happy Days, like, you could tell that there's times on Happy Days where like he'll be standing there and like he's kind of nervous to say to say his line, and then like you could tell that Ron Howard's kind of like coaching him, like telling him, "Hey, it's okay." Like, because there's there was this one episode, and I can't remember which one it was, and he says something, and then he kind of looks to to Ron Howard for. Uh, for guidance, and then when Ron Howard says his line, like, then he goes off and he's like, oh, okay, he's like, then, you know, and, like, you, he's got that sense of, like, satisfaction, like, okay, I did it correctly, so, you know. Yeah. Um. He also mentioned that he had an embarrassing bar mitzvah, Um. and he also explains that it's, like, a 13-year-old boy or 13-year-old's coming of age, because I think the girls get this in the Jewish community too. I don't know, but I would love to be invited to one, please. Anybody invite me to your bar or bat mitzvah? Anyways. Um, and then uh oh, okay, so I think I should mention this too because 
I learned that the happy dates were supposed to be predominantly around the Cunninghams and Richie show, and it was supposed to be Ron Howard's show. But I think it's season three. Henry said that Fonzie became a full cast member. Is yes. that true? Yes. Okay, so in seasons one and season two, you'll notice when you watch it, Fonzie's not a predominantly big character in these in these seasons. It isn't until season two, episode, I believe, nine where he becomes more of a driving factor of the show. And then by season three, he moves in with the Cunninghams. And then later on in season three, uh, the producers and Gary Marshall came to him and were like, hey, you know, so we're thinking about kind of changing the show and we want to make it more around you. So we're going to call it Fonzie's Happy Days. And he said, absolutely the hell not. Yeah, because I remember him saying that he felt very conflicted because it was definitely Ron Howard's show. And he'd become really friendly with Ron Howard, and he didn't want to step on anybody's toes. And Ron Howard had been, like, uh, so professional since, like, the very beginning. Like, when he was a little guy in the Music Man, um, uh, you know, and on, on the Andy Griffith show. Like, I feel like I know what that is, but I don't know what that is. Never seen it. I've never, never seen, seen it before it. in my life. Um... The and then so Gary so also Henry says at this point that um because this was happening um Gary tried to smooth things over by creating a happy days softball team which I'm like okay as long as we don't have to watch the jumping the shark episode again because that was a nightmare um and then I also you didn't like the, that episode either um also in this book um the narration. Um, he also lets his wife um speak. Uh her name is Stacy. She introduced herself. She's smart, sensitive. Uh they um uh let's see. They and she had a son named Jed when they first met. Uh which was which I thought was kind of cool. You know, he like he's got that whole redhead thing going on. Um he also mentioned, okay, he also mentioned that he's um, the godfather of Ron Howard's daughter, Bryce. Whoever that bitch is. Again, I feel like I should know that name, but I don't. Like, I feel like I should know who that is, but I don't. I do know who that is, by the way. I love Bryce. No, I'm going to come for her whole soul right here. Miss <laughs> Ma'am. Miss Ma'am. The way you treated it, is it Emma Stone in, in the help, Miss Ma'am. You and I uh, have a misunderstanding. Ma'am, at the whole time I'm all like, and you know what I'm thinking about right there, I'd be like, we're gonna review, we're gonna review the book to help, I think, at some point. But, but I get to be written though. Movie. Okay, um, Henry also loves dogs. He says that again. Um, let's see. Oh, the okay, so the jumping the shark thing, you know, I'm surprised that actually he mentioned it in the book. Because this was, what was it, the fifth season, he said? Yes. Okay, so... Which was going to be originally the, the last season, but then they made him sign for three more seasons, and he didn't want to. He said if Ron Howard was going to leave, he wanted to leave, and they wouldn't let him. They said that he was contractually obligated to do three more seasons. So, um, from what I understood, um, Happy Days had 11 seasons, um, but the jumping, as, as far as jumping the shark... Um, that was supposed to be like, how did he describe it? Something that Fonzie said that he was doing because of a bet. What? A bet. Do you remember what that episode? You guys, I don't. I okay, never so seen, okay, well, I'm more I've a Happy Days fan than she is. To be honest, you you guys, we're not gonna lie to you. I'm more a Happy Days fan than she is. Like she she's a fan of Henry Winkler. I love the show Happy Days, so we're kind of uh together on that one. But basically, the whole thing is is that. Um, the Cunningham family goes to Hollywood because Richie's offered a role in a movie, or no, Fonzie's offered a role in a movie to be like a James Dean type. So then, so then it ends up reverting to where it becomes Richie being, um, the the star. Like they want him to 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 uh, come in and audition, and this, you know, it's like, you know, and then Fonzie's having that moment of being like, okay, but you know, it was supposed to be me. Why are they choosing you? You know that kind of thing, right? So then, in the midst of all that, this guy that, I guess, is uh, mad because Richie and Fonzie are with his, with one of, 
with his girlfriend or whatever, or Fonzie was with his girlfriend, challenges Fonzie to a water skiing contest, but uh, he tells him that they have to jump the shark because um, it'll prove his bravery or whatever, 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 whatever. I don't know. So Fonzie accepts, as Fonzie does. So he goes in, so the whole thing in, um, happens, and then Richie and Fonzie end up, end up having this, I guess you could say, friendship spat where they they're like mad at each other in the show and Fonzie tells him he goes I don't want you he goes I don't want you to drive the boat he's like I'm gonna get Ralph to do it he's like you go on and you be a movie star he's like I'm gonna just do my own thing so then uh Richie's like well I can't just let you do that you know you've been there for me all this time and I'm gonna be there for you and he told him he said no so anyway make a long story short it ends up being Richie and Fonzie uh Richie drives the boat Fonzie does the water skiing thing and so he jumps the shark, which is hella ridiculous. I'm sorry, like again, Henry, I love you, but that was hella ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the next thing that I wrote, okay. So you know what I'm about to say. Do you know what I'm about to say right now? No. The next part that I pulled from this thing was Henry met Paul McCartney. Oh, hold on right there, guys. Pause Mecca. for just a second. I gotta Mecca. use Mecca. Hold on. Uh, Pause a sec. I gotta use the restroom. Hold on. Oh my goodness. God damn it. Okay. All right. I think you're back. All right. So this next part is for is for it. This next part is for Paul McCartney. If you are not Paul McCartney, um, come back in about 15 minutes when I'm done ranting. I love. Hello, Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney, we have beef, okay? Bring when your ass here specifically. We're going to stress you out right when quick. When my uncle, when my Theo Henry is calling, you get, when you give him your number and you tell him to call you and you never call him back, baby, we got beef. We got beef. We go fight. We go fight. It's on. We going to be in the parking lot. Like, we're ready. We're ready. Because how are you going to talk to my Uncle Henry and give him your phone number and never call you back? Because, like, it's on site, Macca. It's on site. I heard about what you do that. You do that to people as a joke, that you give them, give them your number and then you change your number the next day. Um. Yeah, because, like, first of all, don't even give me your number because I'm not going to call you. Like, and don't invite me nowhere because I'm not going to go. Because we gonna fight. We're gonna fight over this. I promise. And, and I'm not gonna be quiet about it. Anyways. Okay, now I'm calm. Oh no, she she on your ass, Maka. She oh, on your ass. Oh, okay, okay. This next part, this next part gets me too because then Henry talked about meeting Mick Jagger. You know I am not a Rolling Stones fan, okay? But I can understand their importance and their significance in the rock and roll history. Like, I'm not dumb. Like, I I can understand that, and I can give them credit. I do not fuck with Mick Jagger, okay? Okay, so Deke told me, and I don't know how much this is true or whatever, because I haven't seen anything posted about it, but I'm just taking this with a grain of salt. He told me that he saw an interview where Mick Jagger said he, that he... He said this, so I don't believe it, because they were saying, they were talking about stars that they announced the LGBTQ plus community and it was on TMZ, so. Okay, so we got this from TMZ. Take this. Anyways, they allege that Mick Jagger said that he was against the LGBTQ. And to that, Mr. Jagger, if you are listening, let me ask you a question. Let me, let me, let me bring this up. Shall we call Angie Bowie and ask her about that? Shall we call her? Shall we ask her about that? Look, I'm not an Angie Bowie stan, okay? You know this. But I'm not afraid to, I'm not afraid to go in there with the hard-hitting questions and be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Because I know that wasn't you. Because I could bring up about 20 pictures right now of you and Bowie, and I'm like, y'all look super intimate. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now I'm done. I was like, I have to take, I have to take a breath now. Because I was like, that got, that got all on my nerves. I was like, because Mick Jagger, like, mm, shock. You know what? 
I'm going I'm to be, I'm be good Christian girl. I'm like, I'm going to let my halo shine, like get right back on my head because I'm be good. I'm Your be halo good is there. crooked. I'm be good because like, again, we're going back to Robin Williams. So um, he put, so Henry mentioned that when Gary Marshall was asked why he cast Robin Williams for the part of Mork, Gary Marshall said that uh, he was the only alien who arrived for the audition. And I love that about him. Like, I literally, like, this book didn't, this book didn't, like, make me cry, but that part made me cry. Because, like, Robin Williams was so sweet and so good. And, like, I feel like a lot of people failed Robin Williams. I do. I do because like do you remember okay do you I don't know if you remember when he died right when when they announced that Robin Williams died and then I think it was I think it was Billy Crystal went on the view and was talking to Whoopi and then you know Whoopi and Billy Crystal had their little thing or whatever and I was like y'all can't pick up a phone y'all can't send a text like if something was going on with Mr. Williams or whatever, because allegedly he had Parkinson's disease, I I heard or so. I don't know how much of that is true, and I don't know what was going on. Mental health is real, and Robin Williams had been through so much and probably suffered in silence, and there was probably so much other things that we don't know about. Actually, that's the next book I think I'm going to read. After well, there is Chunk. a story, and I don't know if y'all have heard this. There's a story from Matthew Lawrence. Please go check the, check out the Lawrence Brothers Brotherly Love podcast where he talks about Robin Robin Williams and they were on the set of Mrs. Doubtfire. And he said that, he said after they were filming, he said, because it was, I forgot what scene he said it was, but he said that, you know, he would, Robin would let the kids go into his dress, into the trailer and, you know, he would play with them and engage them and whatever and, like, do all these funny voices. Well, he said that he went, Matthew Lawrence said that he went and knocked on, on the trailer and he heard this fr- faint, brittle voice saying, I'm not in the mood right now, just don't come in. And so Matt goes, not thinking, he goes, being a kid, he goes, I opened the door, he goes, and Robin was sitting there like this the whole time. Yeah. And he goes, and I looked at him and I said, and I said, Robin, what's wrong? And he goes, he goes, don't, he goes, just don't let people get to you. He's like, you know, he goes, this is a hard business. He's like, and we got to all suffer in silence. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. I do. I do truly believe that Robin Williams was um, some one of our anchor beings that we were supposed to come in contact with on this on this earth and like love and not not really knowing how to be loved but i also learned this week i also learned something very new about robin williams that i had no i would have never guessed this i knew this because she's about to say i already knew this because i've seen all the interviews he was besties with christopher reed like you like these two people are in such different categories as actors like you wouldn't even think these two people like go together, but then when you like when you see it, you're like, I get it. I totally get it. You're like, I totally get it because it's supposed to be like this. It's a, a Superman supposed to be besties with Mark? I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like of all well, the things, the planet Orc was like a planet that was uh, that was right next to Krypton. Krypton. So it makes sense. Like, it makes sense. And I didn't even know. Okay, you guys. You guys. I am not a DC stan. Okay? So I've never seen the Superman movies. I saw The Man of Steel. and I, I with, with Henry Cavill. Okay? And Deke and I, as brother and sister, by the way, this is going to be a little side story apart from this. I was telling Deke when I was... Okay, so this whole... Apart from Robin Williams and that coming up. But I was telling Deke that in our timeline, right, we have a different memories than what our parents would do, right? So, like, my mom and my dad would have known Christopher Reeve as Superman, right? But in our timeline, we know him as, you know, he was the quadriplegic, but we knew that he was Superman in some sort of capacity and that he had he was an actor previously and this uh, this accident happened and that's what we knew him from his activism right for the disabled community and research things like that but i was like 
And then now in this new timeline, now we have Henry Cavill as Superman. And I was just like, it's so different. It made me really think a lot about like, all the stuff that we witnessed and like stuff like that. Anyways, there's a documentary that's coming out, by the way, that I want to see about Superman. Anyways, um, so Robin Williams, back to Robin Williams. I would have loved to have had a conversation. Just sit and chill. Don't tell me anything about the business. Don't tell me anything about anyone. How are you doing, sir? Tell me what you are doing. How are you feeling? Tell me anything. You know what I'm saying? No, exactly, exactly. Like, how are you feeling? Can I get you anything? Do you want me to make you a cup of coffee? Can I make you some breakfast? Do you know what I'm saying? I like breakfast, but I would, I would have totally made, I totally would have made uh, Robin Williams breakfast, um, because, um, do you remember when Rachel Ray did that thing where she pissed me off and didn't make Michael J. Fox's pancakes? You guys, I. That pissed me off. That pissed me off. Like, he was a guest on her show. Do you remember? And she was making those pancakes and she wouldn't make it for him. Like, I would totally make this man breakfast. Make him a full-on goddamn breakfast. I like those fucking spliffs because I am. I promise you, Michael J. Fox will be completely peaceful in my home. Okay? Promise. I promise. He's you know another one we need to protect at all costs. We Michael need to protect this man in bubble wrap and make sure that he's protected at all costs. Because I would love to see, I would love to get a chance to meet him one day and be just like, you know, I said, when we went, did you see the documentary that he just released a couple of, was it uh, last year? Who, Michael J. Fox? Of course I saw. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was so upset when he was, like, tripping over everything and, like, and I was, like, and I get it that he doesn't want to be helped and he wants to do things on his own and that's fine. But I guess the part, the, the like, part of me that isn't cold and heartless is, like, oh, my God, can we get this man, can we wrap this man in bubble wrap, please? Like, what if he falls in the fucking busy street? Like, what the hell? And no one's there. Like, he could get hit by a car or something. I don't know. I just think the worst. Um. Anyways, uh, his wife. Let me say, um, uh, Tracy. Hold on, Michael J. Fox's wife. She's also named Tracy too, right? Yeah, she's named Tracy. Like we she's, need to protect her. We need she's to a saint. Her let me just tell you. Let me just say, she's a saint too. To for for her to, and I'm not trying to sound mean at all in any way, way shape, or form, but for her to have lasted this long with with him, like she's she's truly a saint. We got to protect needs, her at all costs, too. Like, she needs to be protected at all costs. Because, like, how the... You know when I learned that God wasn't fucking real? Because if God was real oh, and yeah, merciful... Yeah. If God is fucking real and merciful, you cannot fucking tell me that this guy is not on a fucking power trip. Because how the fuck is he going to put Miss Dana Reeve through all that bullshit with her husband... For nine fucking years, taking care of him, like, that's no easy feat. Like, trust me, I've been, I've worked in the medical industry, and I've seen some shit. That shit is not easy. It is not easy to be a caregiver to anyone in any sort of situation. And then what happens? He passes away. She gets lung cancer. She's never smoked a day in her fucking life. God. Didn't we discuss this before? That's when I truly knew you weren't shit. That's when I knew you weren't shit. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, thank you. Fuck you. And then he took Steve Irwin. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He's got to get on with this shit because I'm, I'm fucking done with you, God. I'm fucking done. Meanwhile, Keith Richards is going to outlive all of us. All right, you guys, I got to get off this tangent because now I'm getting angry. <laughs> now I'm getting mad. Okay, so the um, the next thing that I pulled was Henry saying that he had a hard time expressing and saying I love you to people. Um, I, I, I feel like I could understand that in a way. But, like, as a cancer, like, I get it because I only, I only say I love you to you and buddy and that's it. Like, and and truly mean it because I I don't like people Deke knows I don't like people 
It's like, I really don't like humans. Um, and then he also mentioned Sissy Spacek, which I thought was interesting. Um, he also mentioned that he had auditioned for something with Meryl Streep. I can't remember what it was. I just put, hello, Meryl Streep. And then um, I think he said he worked with Sally Field as well. Um, but I... I didn't pull all that because I was like, okay, whatever. Um, he also said that he there was also a Harrison Ford mention, which I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and he mentioned Star Wars, that he didn't think this Star Wars thing was going to be a big deal. But I was like, um, 2024 sitting here like, okay. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I was trying to think. Yes, I remember now what movie Henry Winkler started in with with. Harrison Ford and Sally Field. I couldn't remember. I was like, what? Yeah, I think, wasn't it a TV movie? You guys, he was mentioning all this stuff and I've never seen it. It was called Heroes and I'd seen it before. Um, There's, I don't know, I'm just kind of picky and I'm just like, okay, let's watch this movie. But anyways, um, he also says, okay, this I don't believe. He, Henry Winkler says that Ron Howard doesn't smoke weed. Sir, who are you talking to? Because I'm like, literally, okay, in my notes, he says, Ron doesn't smoke weed. And I'm like, the lies. Having big ideas like we're directing, like directing movies, the lies. Like, Mr. Howard. Because at this point, he was talking about Ron Howard told him that he was going to leave the show because he wanted to direct movies. Like, oh my god, like, that's ever going to be a thing. Like, Ron Howard directing. <laughs> that's cute, Ron. That's cute. That's, that's, cute. Cute. that's cute. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, um, I saw that movie. He, The one that I really liked was when Ron Howard directed the movie about those kids from Chile that got, was it Chile? Or the Asian, the Asian babies that got stuck in the in that um that cave or something, and those the the guys from like NASA, those divers had to get them out. This was during the pandemic. You guys, you had to be there. It was weird. <clears throat> okay. Anyways, I digest. Um, he also uh, mentions he has won two daytime Emmys. Um, he also likes to garden, which. I can't really see that, but like, okay, teach me how to keep my plants alive. Um, he said also in the beginning that he kind of struggled finding his place with his um bonus son, his wife's son Jed. Um, I don't know. I've never had the benefit of being a step parent, so I don't know, or a bonus parent. Cause like, I don't know. Um, ABC didn't. Uh, he also mentioned that he felt like ABC didn't really care about Ron Howard, so that's why he left. And then um, we get the unfortunate, like, five minutes of him talking about Scott Bayo. I wish you could see these notes because I'm, like, literally piped down Chachi. He is not cute. And I was like, he's also a pedo. <laughs> no lies affected. Um, Henry... Also, Henry mentions that he was almost in Greece, um, and he turned it down. Um, because he didn't want to be typecast. Because he didn't want to be typecast, so it went to John Travolta, who I also think is a sweet man. Okay, I got, I have a question for you. Because I, what I was hearing was that Henry Winkler produced MacGyver. Is that true? He directed it. He directed MacGyver, the actual TV show. I was like, see, I didn't know. He also um, directed Dolly Parton in the Smoky Mountain Christmas. Have you ever seen that movie? No, but but now I want to now. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna see if it's on Voodoo's because we're gonna we're definitely gonna get it to review for Christmas. Um, and he also stated uh, Henry also mentions a lot in his book that he really studied to be a good dad. Um. Oh, hold on. Let me grab my thing. Give me a sec. Right. Okay, you guys. Sorry about that. I was like, I have to plug in the charger. All right. Um, he mentioned oh, he really quick, re really, really quick. Let me interrupt you. So I got a message from one of our previous guests that we've had on the podcast. Gabe, he asked me what uh, song that was it that you mentioned from A Star Is Born that you wanted him to do. 
Shallow. It's the duet with Lady Gaga. Okay, I'm messaging him right now. Okay. Um the next thing I remember <laughs> was we we got all the beef with things. He um Henry said that he was supposed to direct Turner and Hooch and that Tom was a big old diva or whatever and Hanks was a big old diva. And if you've heard this, if you've heard me mention this before, when you have um, beef with Henry, you also have beef with us. But no, you, thanks has beef with Big Bird, and that just doesn't sit well with me. So it's on, it's on. Um, he also mentions working with um, Catherine Hepburn and having a very interesting dinner with Betty Davis, which high key I stand. That was cool. Um, when he said when he talked about Betty Davis, that, that was cool. He mentioned Ron Howard owning Imagine Entertainment, which I don't even know if that's still around. Mm, I'm not sure. Um, he also mentioned now this I was unclear of, but it sounded like he directed um the movie Cop and a Half with Burt Re- Burt Reynolds. Is that true? I couldn't tell you. I've never seen it, but I think so because I've never seen it. Oh, and um, Henry Winkler is the principal in the Scream movies. Like the first I'm Scream, the, the first the one, the first one, the original one in the in the original one, and then I think, I think maybe later on he was in like one of the TV clips or something. I'm not sure, but I do remember. I do remember the Scream thing. Um, he produced episodes of Hollywood Squares. Um, he, he's, he mentioned a tweet about gun control and he says never to talk about gun control, which honestly, I couldn't see Henry Winkler with a gun, but then now that he mentioned it, I totally could. <clears throat> he, um, gave a little bit about, uh, making the water boy and working with Adam Sandler, which I thought was kind of nice. Um, he also mentioned the Neil Simon play that he did with John Ritter. We also got a little John Ritter mention here. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about John Ritter, um, but I truly felt um, his death. He had a heart attack. Um, uh, the next thing that he mentioned was the movie Down to You with Freddie Prince Jr. That's been a long time. I haven't seen that movie in such a long time. Uh, I've never seen it, so I couldn't say because I've never seen it. Henry likes dogs. Um, he talked about his black, the dog that he thought was a black de- a lab that they named Linus, but was not a black lab. He turned out to be a Great Dane. Um, this dog didn't like water. Um, at towards the end of the book, he mentioned that his wife, um, Stacy, had cancer, which. Okay. Um, I'm also surprised we didn't get any information on Marley Matlin. Um, she's one of my heroes. I love Marley Matlin. Um, I should look and see if her book is on Audible, by the way. I, kn- I know that sounds weird, but somebody else could read the book. Come on now. Um, Henry also has a very funny sense of humor. I would love to hear, I would love to hear some of his stories, but, um, did you know that his Han- Hank Zipser books were uh, a TV show in the UK? I heard him mention it before, yes. But, that's, but okay, again, Henry, I hope that someday you will see this or that one of your kids will see this or your grandkids will see this and they'll show this to you because I have to tell you something. I'm not into Hank Zipser. I like Ghost Buddy. I want another Ghost Buddy book. Yeah. Um, and then Henry finally wins a, a primetime Emmy and he was like, it's such a big deal. Uh, um, and that was some of the things that I grabbed from this book. Um, I really liked the book. I felt like it was easy to listen to and um, it sort of, I mean, it was only like nine hours. It wasn't long at all. And it wasn't, um, I don't think it was really hard to comprehend or anything like that. I learned, I learned a little bit of some fascinating things that I didn't know. I had never known about uh, Ronnie Marshall, Penny and Gary Marshall's sister. I didn't know about that. 
I never heard the stuff with Robin Williams. Uh, obviously, anytime there's a Robin Williams mention, I'm so there. Um, because uh, Robin Williams was amazing. Um, but yeah, that was what I got from the book. So what would you rate this book, Deke? Is this one of your favorite books that you can listen to like every year? Or Yes. Um, up until I finished the John Stamos book, because I'm listening to the John Stamos book, if you'd have told me and... Um, since this ain't about you, John. This is about Henry Winkler. So with this book, I'm gonna rate it. I'm actually gonna give it the highest rating ever. I'm gonna give it ten point ten. Okay, yeah. I would uh, I would I would say that's about right. I would give it a ten out of ten. Um is this something that I would go back to? Um I don't know if I would go back to it like as far as books that I like to try to read every year. Um, maybe in a couple of years I'd revisit this book. Um, but I don't know. Like, I heard it and it was good. I liked it. It was easy to, like, understand and, like, um, understand what he was going through and things like that. Um, I would give it probably, I would say it's like an eight. Okay, I'll be generous and give it a nine. Um, I felt like, you know, we did learn some new things about him that we didn't know. He told some some great stories about like Robin Williams and like John Ritter and like things like that. Um, that doesn't necessarily like really mean anything in the grand scheme of things. Um, he's lived a he's very he's lived a very interesting life, which is which is interesting. Um. I haven't read any of his kids' books because my kid is 17 um, and wasn't really into those books. Um, but for the sake of this podcast, who knows? Maybe we might read them and delve into them. But um, other than that, that was it. Do you have anything else to add before we leave, Deke? No. Nope. I think we said everything that we wanted to say about this book. Um, if you like Henry Winkler and you like Happy Days and like Gary Marshall and things like that, you, I think you would enjoy this book. Um, it was, it was, like I said, it was an easy read. Um, it wasn't really heavy, too heavy where you like, you were crying a lot or whatever. Um, it was easy to get through. Um, I'm list. I'm going to start right now. I'm listening to Connie Chung's book. Um, I'll have my notes on that probably Wednesday or Thursday. Um, and then we'll probably listen to the John Stamos book. And then in October, we're going to be doing Lord of the Rings, all of the movies and the TV show. And maybe some scary movies. I don't know. We'll see. What do you think, Deke? Huh? Um, I'm talking about what we're going to be doing in October. Oh. oh, yeah, I would say. I would say yeah. I would say we'll we'll do the um, the um, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, yeah. We're doing the Lord of the Rings books and uh, movies. Um, and we're gonna. We're, there's a lot to cover with the Lord of the Rings, so we're gonna try to take it easily. But anyways, um, be nice to each other. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, by the way, thank you all for the 300 uh, whatever views it was that we got on the Imitation, imitation of, Life of Life video. Um, that We had an interesting discussion about it, and that's what we do here. We're not like a review channel, even though, even though we do review because we like talk about things that happen in certain movies. But we're not like that other format. But other than that, you guys, we'll see you guys later. We'll be back on Wednesday with Connie Chung's book. And then maybe John Stamos book to close out, but we'll see what happens because we were gonna, I thought we were gonna do a movie, but oh, I know we are gonna do a movie. We're gonna do Murder on the Heartland on Wednesday. How about that? Yes, I have to watch it. I haven't watched it yet. Which, by the way, y'all, fascinating fact, that's not available on DVD, and I really want to see the DVD of it. It's not. We um we have to watch it through YouTube, but we'll discuss that on, on Wednesday. Anyways, wah, bye, wah. you guys. Bye. Wah, wah.